What's up guys? Welcome back to I'm So Craigie. Today we're in a country that is very special to my heart. We're in the beautiful country of Wales. This is my home country guys for those of you that didn't know and today we're going to be checking out the seaside towns of South Wales. A beautiful place to go on holiday guys if you're into camping, even not just van life. If you've got a family and you're into going away camping in all different parts of the UK, you should definitely be heading over to South Wales. I spent a lot of time here as a kid with my family on holiday camping all over the place. It's a beautiful place and somewhere that certainly should not be overlooked guys. Thanks for tuning in. What an intro. I'm not crying, you are. Right, guys, let's get into Wales. Wales is a tiny country located to the west of England and the east of Ireland. It has a small population of just over 3 million people, and I'm one of them. However, it has a sheep population of over 10 million. The official languages of Wales are Welsh, of course, which is a Celtic language, and English. It's a constituent country that makes up part of the UK. When you're driving into South Wales, guys, if you're coming in along the M4, you'll first notice to your left, absolutely nothing at all. <laughs> <laughs> so drive on through to Cardiff. Cardiff is the capital city of Wales, and yeah, I know, it's not a seaside town, but come on, how can I miss out the capital? There's a lot to do in Cardiff, for adults and the kids. The main attractions are Cardiff Bay, Cardiff Castle, TechniQuest for the kids, City Hall, the National Museum, Wales Millennium Centre, the Welsh Parliament, Cardiff Market, where you can try some authentic Welsh cakes, and St David's Shopping Centre. Cardiff has a great nightlife with plenty of bars and clubs and loads of restaurants and takeaways for you to grab a bite to eat. And of course, not forgetting the Principality Stadium. Rugby Union is the national sport of Wales and it's something we excel in. If you manage to watch Wales play, you will experience the most passionate and electric atmosphere you'll ever experience in your life, especially if we're playing our biggest rivals, England. If you can get tickets to watch Wales face England during the Six Nations Championship, which takes place every year during February and March, you'll witness patriotism that's second to none. The streets will be flooded with red jerseys, the atmosphere is amazing, friendly and welcoming to everybody. After Cardiff, drive half an hour southwest to Barry Island. Right guys, so I just got to Barry Island. Parking is horrendous. To be fair, it is a bank holiday Monday tomorrow, so there's probably a lot more cars here than normal. I found a car park near the sea, well, right next to the sea. I've been driving around it for like about 15 minutes to get this spot. It's paying display car park. I'll put the coordinates in the description. You won't really need it. It's signposted, it's easy to find, but I'll put them in there anyway. Let's go check out Barry Island, guys. There's lots to do in Barry, guys. They've got a beach if you fancy a swim, loads of arcades and things going on, and Pleasure Park for the finger quotes, kids. And for the Gavin and Stacey fans among us, you might recognize this open area.
Speaking of Gavin and Stacey, let's not forget the Gavin and Stacey house, which you're welcome to come and view and take pictures of. They don't charge any money for it. However, I think somebody does live there, so I'm not going to put the actual address here on my video for all you crazed fans to spam with mail. I have, however, put the coordinates for the location of the house in the video description. Tell me tomorrow, I'll wait by the window for you. Okay, so Barry Island is accessible by train from pretty much all over the UK and it's accessible by bus. If you get in the train there, guys, make sure you get the train to Barry Island and not Barry because Barry Island is all the footage you've just seen. Barry is like the town or city of Barry. Next up, fourth course. Porthcawl is about a 40 minute drive west of Barry Island. There are seven beaches at Porthcawl, but the two main ones are Rest Bay and Sandy Bay, both of which are popular among surfers and swimmers. After Porth Call, I jumped back on the M4 and headed towards the Gower, passing through Swansea on the way. Swansea is a great city guys, especially if you're after a good night out. It's got a great nightlife and if you are going to head out, make sure you go to Wine Street, which is the main area for partying. There's a part of Swansea called Mumbles, found on the western edge of Swansea Bay. It's a nice little place and definitely worth checking out if you're in Swansea. Just outside of Swansea, you have the Gower. The Gower was the first area in the United Kingdom to be designated an area of outstanding natural beauty. It's known for its coastline and it's popular with outdoor enthusiasts, especially surfers. If you're a surfer, you probably already know the Gower, but if you don't, it's definitely worth checking out. It has loads of campsites and amazing beaches. Other activities you can do with the Gower are caving, cliff jumping, fishing, hiking, and more. You can even skydive there, as the Gower is home to Wales's only drop zone. So this beach that I'm chilling on now is called Horton Beach and it's one of the many beautiful beaches you'll find at the Gower. But this beach in particular will always be special to me because this is the beach where we spread my father's ashes. Over there. This place is lush, you should come to the Gower. After the Gower, I drove about an hour and a half further west to a small place called Wise Man's Bridge, which is just outside of Saundersfoot. This is where I camped up for the night. I sort of brushed over the south coast up until this point because in my opinion, the Gower and everything west of it is where it's all going on. So I wanted to get there faster to do some exploring.
At Wise Man's Bridge, the beachside parking is free of charge. However, there's no overnight camping. If you plan on visiting Saunders Foot and plan on staying there all day, it's going to cost you a tenner in parking. Wise Man's Bridge is about a 30 minute coastal walk from Saunders Foot. So it would be worth parking up there for free and walking to Saunders Foot. It seemed that that was what most people were doing. I'll show you Saunders Foot on part two of this video, guys. Where I packed up for the night was a little area between the campsite and the beach. I could pick up the campsite's Wi-Fi, which was super handy, and they even had a toilet block right near the entrance that you could ask to use. I met this nice couple at the beach who taught me about cockles and that you can go searching for them on a low tide at Wise Man's Beach. Cockle picking? Yeah. What's that? Yeah. yeah. Well, what about the cockles? Are they mussels? Are they? Or? Yeah. There is the pub. And along that coastline there is where you'll probably have your car parked. On a low tide, if you walk all the way around, all the way around here, to where I am now, you can scrape the sand and find cockles. Like this one here. Take them home, boil them, put some salt and pepper, soy sauce. Never done this before in my life. I just met an older couple and they told me about it, so I'm giving it a go. Well, there is certainly a knack to looking for cockles because uh, I was just looking for like half an hour and I found four. <laughs> But the Chinese over there have buckets for, so they seem to know what they're doing. I was speaking to a few of them in the best Chinese that I know. I taught English in China for three years, for those of you that don't know. And uh, I speak basically no Chinese. But yeah, I was speaking to them and they were smashing it out. Buckets full of them they got. They're going to be feasting for days. I got four. I'm starving tonight. <laughs> <laughs> I never even heard of cackles till about an hour ago and now I've got four of them to eat so I've no idea how to cook them so if you don't hear from me it's because I've eaten a parasite and lost my legs and arms and head. Tonight I'm staying at Wise Man's Bridge so where I was parked along the beach there ah, let me show you Actually, oh. So where I was parked along the beach there, it says strictly no parking overnight. And where I'm parked now is also no overnight parking which means I'm obviously not going to park here. So I'm I'm starving. So tonight's dinner consists of four cockles, garlic rice, and a cup of soup. Shout out to Sarah's mum <laughs> on that one. Oh, it's empty. We got a dud. Now I've only got three to eat. So here's the cockles. They're actually uh, very weird looking things, aren't they? There's three of them. Get rid of those. We don't need them. Three cockles. And I don't know what to do with them. <laughs> Gonna add some salt. Some pepper. And I'm gonna put in some mixed herbs because why the f not? Herbs go with everything. Get loads of them in, pour the soup in, nick it into like a nice ricey soup, and voila, that's my dinner. Right, so I'm gonna try these cockles, see what all the fuss is about. Oh. They're just full of sand. I mean, they taste like I expected them to taste. They didn't taste that bad. If you like mussels and oysters, you'll love these. But they were well sandy. Guys, that is the end of part one. I hope you enjoyed it. Make sure you subscribe for part two, and I'll see you on the next one.